Criminal Justice, Mainstream and Cross Currents, Chapter 8, The History and Organization of the Courts. This is a narrated version of this PowerPoint presentation. The History and Organization of the Courts. The U.S. criminal court system is an adversarial process. Outsiders have difficulty understanding what is happening in the court. Courts in history include the blood feud, courts in England, trial by compurgation, trial by ordeal, and trial by battle. The blood feud is based on vengeance. In some societies, a payment could be made to the family's victim in lieu of violence. In times of economic hardship, in which the labor of everyone is required for group subsistence, a blood feud could be devastating for any given society. Courts in England. The court did more than resolve conflicts and were convened for special occasions. The lines between civil, civil and criminal cases were not established, provided revenue for the king and nobles, and crimes were redefined as offenses against the state. Trial by compurgation was the practice of taking an oath of truth. The value of the oath was tied to the value of the oath taker's life. Trial by ordeal included trial by cold water, trial by hot water, trial by hot iron or fire, and dependent on divine intervention to demonstrate the innocence of the accused. Trial by battle, originally used by knights to solve disputes, Litigants could select someone else to fight for them. Development of the jury. The inquest can be considered to be the first type of jury. Also, historically, grand jury, jury trial, Magna Carta, and Court of the Star Chamber. Grand jury. The Assize of Clarendon established the beginnings of the grand jury system. Modern grand juries are primarily a check on the prosecutor, determines whether the evidence is strong enough to charge the accused. The church stopped supporting trial by ordeal. Originally, the jury and grand jury compromised the same members. It has evolved into a check on the state's power to prosecute citizens. Magna Carta, signed by King John in 1215, limited the king's power and recognized noble rights. Court of the Star Chamber, established to deal with offenses such as riots, unlawful assembly, perjury, criminal, li criminal libel, and conspiracy. It was noted for its abuses and abolished in 1641. Courts in colonial North America. Colonial courts develop in response to local concerns of each colony. Complaints about the courts were frequent and individuals often appealed to England to send trained judges to administer the law. Slavery and the law. The early adoption of slavery in colonial America caused problems for the justice system. An alternative system of laws was created to control slaves. One of the enduring consequences of the independence from England is the documents that were created to specify their relationship between the people and the state, including the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The changing nature of the court includes all of the following. Marbury v. Madison, McCullough v. Maryland, Supremacy Clause, Reconstruction and Expansion of Federal Authority, Businesses, Unions and Civil Liberties, Plessy v. Ferguson, and the Warren Court. Marbury v. Madison established the judiciary as equal to the executive and legislative branches of government. McCullough v. Maryland established that the court could find that the Constitution included implied powers that could be, be, be deduced from its nature and language. The Supremacy Clause, the U.S. Supreme Court, court established its power as the final word on all cases and became the court of last resort. Or resort. Reconstruction and the expansion of federal authority the social and political issues of various places and decades and decades influence how courts ruled. Plessy v. Ferguson, the 1896 court mandated that separate but equal was reasonable and the Warren court expanded the rights of due process and earned a reputation for championing the causes of society's peoples. Organization of the courts, the difference between civil courts and criminal courts lies in the types of law they deal with. Criminal law concerns the major violations against society and violations that are punishable by prison. Civil law governs private issues. Violations are not punishable by prison. Subject matter jurisdiction. The nature of each case can determine which court will have jurisdiction. Geographical jurisdiction. The political boundaries of cities, counties, and states can determine the geographical jurisdiction of a court. Hierarchical jurisdiction. Trial courts hear the facts of the case, while appellate courts review the work of the trial court judge. 
Structure of the federal courts. There are four levels of federal courts, including magistrate courts, U.S. district courts, U.S. circuit courts of appeal, U.S. Supreme Court, and there are also specialized federal courts. Figure 8.2 shows federal judicial caseload in years 2002, 2007, 2010, and 2011, and can be located in your textbook. Structure of the federal courts. Federal courts hear the following types of cases. Suits involving the government, suits between two or more states, suits involving public ministers, suits involving laws passed by Congress, treaties, and maritime law. Structure of the federal courts. U.S. magistrate courts are the lowest level of the federal court system. Magistrate courts operate as courts of limited jurisdiction. U.S. district courts try felony cases involving federal law and civil cases in which the amount of money in controversy exceeds 75000 They also handle bankruptcy cases, felony cases involving federal law, and civil cases in which the amount of money in controversy exceeds $75,000. Figure 8.4 from your textbook illustrates district courts by district and jurisdiction. Figure 8.3, taken out of your textbook, illustrates U.S. district courts and criminal case by offense for the year 2011. The structure of the federal courts continued. U.S. Court of Appeals serves as intermediate court of appeals and dispose of many um, cases before they reach the Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court, the court of last resort, hears only about 80 cases a year, all of which must involve a substantial federal question. Specialized federal courts handle primary, primarily civil cases, monetary claims against the federal government, and certain criminal cases. State courts include juvenile courts. Unlike adult courts, juvenile courts follow civil law because the primary goal of juvenile courts is rehabilitation and not punishment. State trial courts. Lower state trial courts handle mostly traffic cases, misdemeanors, small claims, and the preliminary stages of felony cases. Major trial courts hear the most serious street crime cases. State courts continued include state intermediate court of appeals. Usually the decision at the intermediate court of the appeal level will be the final decision. However, each state does have a state Supreme Court. These, courses, these courts are the court of last resort for all but a very few cases that bear issues of constitutional or federal law, which will be sent to the United States Supreme Court. Local courts and community courts. Each state has its own jurisdictional pattern to allow municipalities, counties, and neighborhoods to structure their legal system in a way that best responds to citizens. It can include drug courts, conflict resolution courts, family courts, and magistrate courts. Drug courts allow the criminal justice system to accomplish several goals. One, offender can be treated more consistently. Two, drug court personnel are more aware of community treatment options. And three, it's less expensive and more efficient. Conflict resolution programs. Many low-level offenses can be more efficiently dealt with by allowing offenders and victims to work out their disputes between themselves. Family courts may be incorporated into the juvenile court system. Court personnel can be more specialized in their knowledge of family dynamics and resources available to solve family problems. Magistrate courts handle a number of minor offenses and preliminary court proceedings, including some pretrial intervention problem programs and bail. Gatekeeper function is to divert some minor cases to alternative treatment programs. Questions we might ask from this chapter what served as the foundation for the U.S. court? Name three types of court jurisdiction and what do local and community courts do? This is the end of this narrated version of this PowerPoint presentation.